In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Well, today um, we have the optional memorial of the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Um, in Italy, it's called Santa Maria Maggiore. Um, and this was dedicated in the 400s after the Council of Ephesus in honor of Our Lady. So the church and disciples of Jesus have had a long tradition of honoring Mary, the mother of God. So sisters and brothers, as we gather today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. We beg God for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the tribes of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people that escaped the sword have found favor in the desert. As Israel comes forward, to be given his rest, the Lord appears to him from afar. With age-old love, I have loved you, so I have kept my mercy toward you. Again, I will restore you, and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Carrying your festive tambourines, you shall go forth dancing with the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria, those who plant them shall enjoy the fruits. Yes, a day will come when the watchman will call out on Mount Ephraim, Rise up, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people the remnant of Israel. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, proclaim it on distant isles, and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. 
Then the virgin shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. We can sing together. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. So what great faith this Canaanite woman shows and persistence. Hmm? There are many scholars who talk about how, you know, (laughs) this, the cultural bias in that time of Jesus was against anyone who was not Jewish, Samaritan, Canaanite. Those were not, they did not belong right? They were not part of the community, and they were not sharers in God's grace and life. Hmm? And so a lot of scholars point out how, you know, this cultural bias is even afflicting and affecting the Lord, because here comes a Canaanite woman begging for help. And he ignores her. He doesn't answer her at all at first. And the thing that struck me, you know, and I just noticed this as we read it this time, is that uh, I was struck by what the disciples actually said. They said, send her away. (laughs) You know, and I thought to myself, what else could they have said? Couldn't they have said, can you just help her, you know? But they literally said, send her away. You know, so we find this person who already does not belong to the community, trying to break in through Jesus and is ignored first. And then the disciples have gone to Jesus and say, just just send her out. 
And I just noticed that Jesus tells the disciples, I, my mission is very particular. I've come to save the lost sheep of Israel, right? So he's focusing on the people of God, Israel. Now, that's, that's a huge statement in and of itself because the lost sheep of the house of Israel, you know, this is a little historical background, you know, but they've been scattered after Jerusalem was invaded earlier on, both in the 700s and in the 500s BC. Jews have been spread all over the world. So when Jesus says it's for the lost tribes of Israel, he's trying to gather all the members of the 12 tribes together again, even though 10 of those tribes have been lost since 722 BC when the north was destroyed. So he's trying to bring them back together. But that's just an aside. I don't know why my mind went there now. But anyway, Jesus then speaks to this woman. And you know, it's like, I know a lot of scholars compare, you know, because he says, you don't take the food of children and throw them to dogs. So he's actually comparing this Canaanite woman who's coming to like, you know, to like a dog. That's kind of, that's a little mean, wouldn't you say? But anyway, I, I also want to look at it a little bit differently. Because I think Jesus also leaves an opportunity for her. Um, because I think he's speaking more about the food which is given to the children, right? If you are in your house and you have a dog and you give food to your children, will the food get to the dogs at some point? Maybe, right? Usually the kids would take the food and give it to the dog or something will happen in that fashion, you know? So if we take Jesus to be comparing himself to the food, the food is for the children. The food is for the people of Israel. I've come with this particular mission. But I think even by using that, he's opening a door. And this woman is so faithful. She won't take no for an answer. <laughs> she just, hey, dogs also get the food too. So you got to help me. And Jesus recognizes her great faith. Hmm? So first of all, her faith it consists in recognizing Jesus is the answer. That Jesus can heal her daughter. And she stops at nothing to get to Jesus. Hmm? And I thought about, you know, we are the body of Christ today as the church. Are people running to us because we are offering life? and food, and life-giving power. I think we ought to be just like Jesus in that our message, our works, our mission should draw people to want to come and find life in us. So I thought about that a little bit. Hmm? We have to have also, the faith of this woman who kept knocking at Jesus' door and would not let anything stop her. Hmm? All right. The only other comment I wanted to make was about the first reading. Hmm? Because we're called to this faith in Jesus who has the power to save us and to feed us. What is this saving power? I think the first reading kind of describes it. It's this love that God has for us. The first reading says, With age-old love, I have loved you, so I have extended my mercy towards you. Right? So the love of God is shown in extending his mercy towards us. 
extending his mercy to people who really don't deserve that mercy. Because in the first reading, the context of Jeremiah, we're talking about a people who have forsaken God and worshipped idols. And he's saying, I still love you with an age-old love that I give you my mercy. And we see Jesus doing that, extending mercy. Because he desires to restore us, he says, I will restore you. You shall be rebuilt. And he says, dancing, you shall dance. You shall plant and enjoy fruit again. That's the desire of God for us. And that's his saving power. So today, let's ask God to give us this true faith in the saving power of God, in his mercy. That even though at this time we're passing through many difficulties, we can hold on to him knowing that through him and through his power, we will be rebuilt, we will be restored, we can dance again and know the fullness of life and healing. So let us pray. <clears throat> Beloved brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in our God, for he takes great delight in bestowing benefits on his people. Let us fervently pray. Increase your grace and your peace, Lord. We pray. Increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Eternal God, for whom a thousand years are like the passing day, help us to remember that life is like a flower which blossoms in the morning but withers in the evening. We pray, increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Give your people manna to satisfy their hunger and living water to quench their thirst for all eternity. Increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Let your faithful ones seek and taste the things that are above and let them direct their work and their leisure to your glory. Increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Deliver us from all harm, Lord, and pour out your abundant blessings on our homes. Increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Show the faithful departed the vision of your face. Let them rejoice in the contemplation of your presence. We pray, increase your grace and your peace, Lord. And in this moment of silence, we take the time to pray for the needs in the depths of our hearts. And we unite with these intentions, the intention for this Mass, for the living and deceased members of our Blessed Sacrament community. We pray, increase your grace and your peace, Lord. Father, hear and answer us because we make all our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who feeds and saves us. Amen. So as we make the offertory, we invite you to continue to remember the church in your generosity. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered. No request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's end you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Today we especially remember all deceased members of this blessed sacrament faith community. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Ignatius of Loyola, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So, at our Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom. Power, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
We have a God who feeds us, whose food for the children and for the dogs, who, like the sower, spreads the word everywhere so that all can be fed and all can grow. So we invite the same Jesus to come to us spiritually, for those of us who are watching now, as we make a spiritual communion and ask him to feed us and draw us closer to himself and to heal us. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. We pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go forth to announce the good news of the Lord.